Tyler Boyd is no longer in town, which means the Bengals are going to have a new wide receiver three. Who will fill that void? Plus, Joe Burrow raises a ton of money, and we go one-on-one with Mike Gesicki. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Enter the Jungle. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Erpine, and this is Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Catch us every single Tuesday at 8 Eastern right here on CBT, weekly on Bally Sports, and make sure that you check out Tipco Sportsbook and Garage Beer, our two sponsors for today's show. And Andrew, let's dive right on in to wide receiver three conversation. One, talking wide receivers is something I could do every single day of my life. I love wide receivers, spoiler alert. But it's a real topic, and I think it's just getting started. Tyler Boyd is in Nashville. He signed with the Tennessee Titans, the Bengals, didn't really show much interest in the free agent market as far as retaining Boyd is concerned. And it's because they have all these options for wide receiver three, whether it's Charlie Jones or Trenton Irwin, Andre Yosevash, they drafted Jermaine Burton. I mentioned Mike Gesicki is going to be on the show coming up in just a few minutes. They have options. How do you think this is going to play out? What are your initial thoughts with Tyler Boyd no longer in town after eight seasons? I mean, the way I would see it is – to start the season at least, and maybe for the entire season, it's situational, right? I mean, unless someone truly emerges, I know Gesicki is maybe viewed by a lot of people as sort of the de facto wide receiver three on the roster heading into the season. But, you know, red zone, fourth and long, who has got that comfort in different areas of the field? And who is going to be sort of that go-to, solid, comfortable wide receiver? Who's the versatile one? Jermaine Burton, speed, stretch the field. He also can play slot, of course. He has. Charlie Jones, next step, maybe. Yosevash, okay. Yeah, I think there's going to be some versatility there as well. But ultimately, I think Gesicki might be sort of that initial, let's let's put this out there. I think it's just going to be rotational in the end, though. I, I don't know who's going to emerge. I don't know. But they're like to your point, those four, at least to me, those are the options. And it's going to be fun to see them just kind of put them out there in different packages and see who really shines. A hot take coming in Uh-oh. three Two, one. They didn't replace Tyler Boyd. They didn't replace him. (laughs) I was dramatic with it. You know me. Yeah. Uh, Look, they they didn't replace Tyler Boyd. They they they're going a completely different route, and it's a route we were talking about concerns on last week's show. And I brought up explosive plays. They have to get more explosive. And one way to do that is to have guys that can get downfield that aren't named Jamar Chase, that can break tackles that aren't named Jamar Chase, and. By the way, if you want to be more explosive in the slot, getting Jamar Chase in the slot is a factor. So who who replaces Tyler Boyd? Well, I I think you're spot on here. I think it's a mixture of Jamar Chase, Mike Gesicki, Jermaine Burton, Charlie Jones, and Andre Yosevash. And I don't think Yosevash is going to play in the slot a lot, but he could play outside, which would allow Jamar Chase uh, to kick inside and play that slot spot. And then the other thing here, is Trenton Irwin. Trenton Irwin's probably the the closest Tyler Boyd-like player of these guys where he's a really good route runner, good hands, but doesn't have the the game-changing speed. Like Charlie Jones might end up being the best slot or prototypical slot receiver out of these guys, but he's much faster than Tyler Boyd. The the dude is is quick, quick, quick. And so I I do think that he could emerge as like that that hurry-up offense we we need to go get downfield and get a field goal before the half or we're down six with a minute to go and, and we need to get first downs and get the ball downfield. I think Charlie Jones could give them that. But to your point, in the red zone, Mike Gesicki is a matchup nightmare. And so I think he'll be in the mix. By the way, I'll ask Mike Gesicki uh, who he thinks is going to replace Tyler Boyd coming up. And Jermaine Burton is someone that has played slot. We've seen it throughout the offseason program, has also moved outside as well. And so there are a ton of options. And I think that's the beauty of this offense this year. Maybe T. Higgins gets in there a little bit with that slot fade that worked last year, but it's going to be Jamar Chase. It's going to be Jermaine Burton. You might see some Trent Irwin. Andre Yosevash is certainly going to be in the mix. And then you also have Charlie Jones. It's just there's so many options. And the interesting thing for me, Andrew, I look and you're naming – six receivers here that are pretty much locks to make the team. Who's inactive? Are all six active on game day? Because that means that multiple 
are handling special teams roles. Two things for you. One, first of all, fun fact, Mike Kosicki actually ran a faster 40 than Tyler Boyd coming into the draft. <laughs> He's a freak. Just wait till we talk. We're about. talking like four, five, eight versus four, five, four, whatever it was. And Boyd made up for it in front of like scouts and stuff later. I just, just interesting nonetheless. And then also to your point, if they're going to replace Tyler Boyd, I know this wouldn't really happen for other reasons. They could have just replaced it with Tyler Boyd for less than three million. They didn't want to, but they, I, I don't know. It's, I know it's not that simple, but like for what he actually got signed for at Tennessee, he was out there. He was very available to what the Bengals probably would have wanted had they wanted a Tyler Boyd in a Tyler Boyd role. Other, the other thing I'd point out, though, is we talk about wide receiver three. There's a different way of spinning that phrase, wide receiver three, big three. If you had to hedge your bets, who is part of that big three if it exists come the end of this coming season? I, I think long term, it could certainly be Jermaine Burton. Short term, I don't think anyone knows. I yeah. think Mike Gesicki could fill that role. I think Charlie Jones could fill that role. Uh, I think that... Andre Yosevash could push for outside snaps if he wants to go that route and push Jamar into the slot more. I, I think there's just so many scenarios. Trent Irwin is probably the leader right now because he has the trust, but it's June. And that means there's a lot of time for these guys to earn their keep. We will see who does. I certainly think that Mike Gesicki is going to be a big, big part of this Bengals offense this season. I'll go one-on-one -on -one with Mike coming up next right here on Edge of the Jungle. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. He's Andrew Fox Miller. I'm James Rapine, and I had the pleasure of chatting with new Bengals tight end Mike Gesicki about his fit on offense, how he is vibing with Joe Burrow, who's been in and out of the lineup as he has those rest days during this offseason program. So without further ado, let's get to my one-on-one -on -one conversation with Bengals tight end Mike Gesicki. In the Bengals locker room with Mike Gesicki. Mike, obviously you've been here for a month plus now as far as the off-season workouts go. How is it treating you so far? Uh, it's been great. Uh, everybody's been awesome, teammates, coaches, uh, everything in the organization. So uh, happy to be here, and uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a good process. I think back to when you signed in March and you were clearly targeting coming here yeah. for the offense, for the quarterback, all of those things. Has that, I know it's still early, but has that part delivered so far? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like you said, I mean, it's definitely still early, but um, there's been, you know, no complaints on my end. Uh, everything's been awesome. Um, offense is a lot of fun to be a part of and uh, obviously have, you know, tremendous quarterback play. So uh, all that stuff together is exciting. You mentioned in March at your introductory press conference about blocking mm -hmm. and how you hadn't really been asked to block. Do you think that's going to change here? I think so, yeah, uh, and, and I hope so. Um, it's something that you know I'd love to add to my game and um, you know create another element that uh, you know defenses have to um, you know be aware of when I'm on the field. Uh, so uh, it's something I'm working with and it's uh, something that you know our position coach James Casey's done a you know great job um, you know really diving deep and um, you know helping me with that. I know you've only been working with him for a few months, but. Zach or, or any of these coaches, when they talk about James Casey, their face lights up. Obviously, Drew's been working with him for years, Tanner, a few years now. What stands out about James Casey, the coach? Yeah, I think James, so, I mean, he played seven years in the league, so he gets it. He knows, you know, how players want to be coached, um, has, a, has a very um, successful way of, you know, getting his message across to players. Um, and then, um, like I said, you know, he, he's, he's been in it, so he knows, you know, the ins and the outs and, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't. Has that made the transition easier? Has the transition even been difficult? I know, at least on paper, I'll say this. I think you're a great fit in the offense. Yeah. Makes sense. Pass first offense. They want to throw it all over. You can catch and, and run and all of those things. Is it that simple? Does it come down to that? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you don't want to make it, you know, something that's not or more, more difficult than it has to be. Uh, you know, there's great guys in the locker room. Like I said, you know, great coaches, and it's a great system. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's an easy situation to come into and, you know, meet new teammates and, um, you know, create that, that chemistry. And, um, and then the coaches, like I said, you know, James and Zach and uh, Coach Pitch, like everybody's been awesome. And uh, they've made it very easy to make that transition. How is your chemistry with Joe? Obviously, he's sitting out a practice a, a week and still coming back from the rest, but he's still taking a ton of reps. Yeah, no, he's awesome. He's, he's been incredible. Um, and, you know, he's almost like having another coach on the field, you know, he's been doing a really good job, you know, vocalizing what he wants in certain routes and versus different looks and, you know, leverages and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, 
being great off the field as well. So uh, it's been cool to uh, you know build uh, that chemistry with you know him and you know everybody else in the locker room as well. There's a lot of a lot of really cool dudes in here. One void this off season that technically I guess hasn't been filled and maybe it has with you, but is is Tyler Boyd. He was here for eight years as the the slot receiver and really played inside most of the time. Do you think you envision yourself playing slot also? lining up in line like what, what do you think you're I know it's early and so it could change but like how do you envision yeah I mean he had you know an unbelievable career here was successful um, you know year in and year out was always reliable making big plays um, and I think that you know I don't think you you replace him with just one guy I think it's it's a it's a collective group um, and uh, I think that you know the coaches would are going to do a great job you know putting people in that position to be successful so could it be me on a play? Sure. Could it be a receiver on a play? Sure. Could it be, you know, Tanner on a play? Sure. Like I think, I think there's a lot of versatility uh, with the uh, with the talent that we have in this locker room to to be able to, you know, make those plays. Really good stuff from Bengals tight end Mike Gesicki. Up next, let's talk about his quarterback. Joe Burrow raised huge money at his annual golf invitational. We'll tell you how much he raised and the impact it could have next on Enter the Jungle. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Rapine. He is Andrew Fox Miller. Make sure you check us out every single Tuesday at 8 Eastern on the YouTube channel, Cincinnati Bengals Talk Weekly on Bally Sports. And Andrew, well, Joe Burrow's phrase is do good. He did a lot of good at his second annual golf invitational, raising $1.1 million, ton of sponsors, and that's going to go to underserved and underprivileged people as the, the Joe Burrow Foundation continues to help those, whether it's education, whether it's scholarships, whether it's hunger, Joe Burrow is making an impact, obviously, on the field. And his foundation, uh, along with his parents who lead the charge there, making a huge impact off the field. Yeah, I had to decline my invite. I'm just not much of a golfer, um, James. But it was cool to see some of the footage from it that their team had sent over. I mean, how about, by the way, Robin Burrow throwing dots uh, at the end of that one? I don't know. I'm just, I'll display that right now. I mean, just saying. Runs in the family. That's all. That's that's all it is, right? <laughs> I think. Uh, no, it's it, it's a great event, and you're you're right. It's it's pretty exclusive, and honestly, that's great. I it, do you if you're if you're making this kind of difference, a seven figure difference one day. Sign me up for that all day long, and and I, I love the impact that he's had really from the jump. I mean, from the get go, getting here to Cincinnati. Uh, obviously dating back to his Heisman speech, but coming here to Cincinnati when he had real money to play with, he's been playing with it by putting it uh, to to good causes and, and that cause being the Joe Burrow Foundation and everything it does. So uh, I, I love it, and, and I love that they're able to raise this much money. It's just the second time they've done this, so it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And you know it's extremely important to Joe Burrow when it gets Joe Burrow out of the house in front of everyone in attendance, not playing Smash Brothers or you know, training, lifting, he's there. Uh, it means something to him and obviously to his family. No doubt about it. How much do you think he would have rather, and not that he's not grateful, <laughs> I don't mean that. I know. Would have rather been working out than having to take the mic and, and speak at, at, the, at the Invitational. Because I, I guarantee you, he would have much rather been doing curls or a bench press or something like that with dumbbells. Yeah, I mean, it, it took a little bit over a million dollars to his charity to get him out the door. I mean, there, there it is. There's the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, it's really good stuff. We wanted to highlight it because he's uh, doing great work. And speaking of the Bengals, speaking of events, Andrew and I will be at the Bengals event of the summer. Details on how you can join us coming up next. Welcome back to Enter the Jungle. I'm James Rapine. He is Andrew Fox Miller, and we are pleased to be joined by Bengal Jim, who's throwing the Bengals party of the summer. It's called Jungle Jam. It's Saturday, July 20th at Megacorp Pavilion on Newport on the Levee. And for more about the awesome event that hopefully becomes a yearly thing, Jim, have you gotten any sleep preparing for this event? Uh, between work, the family, and this event, I don't think I've slept in a couple months, James. But I, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. And Andrew, we we talked about this. I mean, you're the brains of the operation, mm. James, the eye candy. But I appreciate you guys having me on, man. Thanks for you, we. I watch you guys all the time. You guys are the best. Do you hear that, James? You're done here. Just you can go. <laughs> you, you think I'd be offended by that, and I'm not. I, it, it's the opposite. It's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm okay with being the eye candy. Uh, I, we will be 
at Jungle Jam, by the way, as uh, Bengal Jim will certainly be there as well. Get your tickets today. Give all of our viewers, everyone listening and watching right now, an idea of what they're going to get because this is, it really is the Bengals fan event of the summer. The best way to explain this thing is going to be a three ring circus, man. It's going to be from 12 to 6, July 20th at Maybe Court Pavilion, right there in Newport, right next to the levee. We're going to have 40 to 60 different players there from every era of Bengals football from the late 60s to today. Uh, we did an announcement uh, here uh, recently. Uh, Zach Taylor is going to be there. Anthony Munoz is going to be there. We are flying in Jeff Blake. We got Corey Dillard who, who had committed. But, uh, you know, we're going to have a big a kid zone. We're going to have a charity cornhole tournament. Uh, we've got a band playing, a DJ. We're going to have two programs throughout the day. Uh, one is going to be with Zach Taylor, the 2024 20, season um, review with Zach Taylor. We're going to probably have Dan Hoard facilitate that for us. And uh, well, the other piece of it is going to be another program that we're going to do that day is Jungle to the Hall 4, uh, which we've done kind of as a standalone event over the past three years. But we've got uh, some really big names. I don't think there's ever been anything like this, guys, where you have you know the OGs from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s getting together with uh, the current era players. And this is going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be some autographed opportunities. We won't be able to really give real specifics on that until we get closer to the event. Anything above and beyond our cost is going to go to five different charities, guys. Um, really now six, but Joe Burrow's foundation, we know Jimmy and Robin Burrow are going to be there that day to do a check presentation. Ken Anderson Alliance, Village of Marici, Small Town Big Dreams, which is Cordell Volson's charity, the Cornhole charity Cornhole tournament that day, which Trent Irwin will likely be in. He's trying to find a partner right now. Uh, the proceeds for that will go directly to Cordell Volson's. Uh, Anthony Munoz's foundation and the Revive Family Foundation will all benefit uh, from this this event. We're we're thinking we're going to be able to get about fifty thousand dollars to those different charities we just talked about. So very exciting, bringing fans together, families together, current players, former players. I mean, can you imagine having like Bob Johnson and Bob Trumpy there with you know Jeff Blake, Corey Tilling, Ken Anderson, um, Yoshi, and some of these guys? I, I can't wait for this event. It's going to be a lot of fun. Don't forget the biggest surprise of all. James Rapine himself will be there. I mean, that's it's pretty important. I, I you know, I, I thought for sure he was going to say that, Andrew. Geez, but uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to help him. I, you know, he's he's a little slow today, but uh, so yeah, actually, James Rapine and Andrew, or they're going to be at the event. They're going to be streaming uh, live that day uh, from the VIP area, kind of overlooking the stage, inside and outside. And if you can't get a ticket to the event, that's why we're we're talking about this. Get the ticket to the event because. The Newport on the levee, the people that can't get into the event will be streaming the event live uh, on their giant TV monitors at the levee as well. So uh, we're excited to have. I know you guys will be talking to some players that day and have a lot of fun uh, with you and your families being there as well. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Like I said, it, it really is the Bengals. If you're a Bengals fan, you're watching this channel, you're watching the show right now, this is the event to be at. And two kids, 12 and under. So Andrew... Yeah. You get to bring both of your kids for free. That's the nice thing. With any paying adult, you get uh, two kids, 12 and under for free. So if you have uh, 15 kids like Andrew's working on, well, oh my no God. problem there. You, you can uh, you can bring all of them, Jim. Hold on, hold on, James. Uh, James, I'm going to ask you this question. I don't know if I'll get an honest answer from Andrew. Are his kids wild? Do we need to put restraints on them? Are they going to be okay? Just let them run around? No, I, Andrew's the one you got to worry yeah, about. His kids yeah, are I'm great. definitely the one you need to worry about. He's, I will say that. He, I have he not tries to be this all shucks guy. And he's uh, not. Yeah, it, that's me to a T. James knows. Listen, I, I have not told my kids about this event, but they watch every episode of Enter the Jungle, so this is the way they're going to find out. Inevitable. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have tons of inflatables. Caldwell Banker, Duke Energy has sponsored the Kids Zone. We're going to have tons of inflatables, giant Connect Four, giant Jangas. Uh, we're just going to have a blast. Now, ticket cost on this, we try to keep this affordable because we want to bring fans together. We want families to be engaged and involved in this. There's so many things. I have four kids, four boys myself, and Things get really expensive to do things with your family, but 20 bucks is all the ticket costs, guys, uh, to get in. Now, there's fees on top of that. If you've ever bought a ticket at, like, Ticketmasters, like credit card fees and venue fees. So there's fees on top of that. I think all in it might cost 25 or 26 bucks, but $20 tickets uh, is the face value. And, um, guys, this has never been done before. I mean, we started this thing with Jungle to the Hall back in 2021. You know, just kind of how do we start stirring up not just local conversation, but national conversation about the guys we feel – as fans, it should be in, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And uh, that first year we did it up in Canton, really on right next to the front door of the of the Pro Football Hall of Fame.
we had hundreds of Bengal fans show up. Willie Anderson shows up. National media picked that thing up and ran with it. Why is there only one uh, Bengal player in the, in the ring, in, not in the ring of honor, but the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame? This whole uh, Jungle Jam, uh, we wanted to expand on what we were doing with Jungle to the Hall to make this more inclusive of former, current players and family events. So we're, we're, we're excited about this. But the Jungle to the Hall is where this all started from here a few years back. For tickets, all you have to do, it's real simple. You Google Jungle Jam tickets and it pops right up and you can follow the link there and you can get uh, as many tickets. Like Jim said, they're going uh, to six different charities as well, including the Joe Burrow Foundation, the Ken Anderson Alliance, Village of Marici, Small Town Big Dreams, the Anthony Munoz Foundation, Revive Family Foundation as well. So we will see you there July 20th. It's Jungle Jam uh, in Newport. Uh, Jim. I appreciate the time. We appreciate the time. Even though you, you took a shot or two at me, I, I'll forgive you. I can't wait to uh, see you at the event. Uh, we love you guys. Thanks so much. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Uh, Bengals Nation follows you guys pretty close, man. Thanks for everything. For more on Jungle Jam, make sure you check out the link in the description on YouTube. We will see you there July 20th. I'm excited, Andrew. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're going to have some really good interviews. But uh, also, anytime we can interact with Bengals fans in person is always a good time. Yeah, if you're show up, like like Bangle Jim said, they're expecting this to sell out by the end of the month. Get your tickets. They're reasonably priced, twelve and under. Include my my kids are likely coming with me. Like let let's go. Let's let's all get together. Have a good time, Bengals fans. Yep, it's gonna be exciting. So we will see you then. We will also see you next week because well, enter the jungle airs every single week, eight Eastern on Cincinnati Bengals Talk Weekly on Valley Sports and. For Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for watching. Enter the jungle.